law firm and attorney Ken Del Vecchio, a Republican strategist. And Richard, in order for something to be perjury, it has to be material that can also qualify for obstruction of justice. Is it material if Donald Trump is telling Cohen lie to Congress about his business dealings when the point of the investigation was about Russian collusion? The answer is yes. Uh, if he is telling Michael Cohen that he should lie to Congress, it is a, it is a federal offense to lie to Congress, period. Add, to add on top of that the fact that Michael Cohen signed presumably cooperation agreement. We know he's cooperating. So it's another offense if he lies when he's cooperating with Mueller or with Congress. So Michael Cohen could go to jail longer. There's no reason. He has no incentive to lie when he testifies in February. There's absolutely no incentive because what's going to happen if they find he's lying, he'll go to he'll go he'll he go. He hates and, Donald and, Trump, isn't it? An incentive? <clears throat> would you would you go to would you take the risk? The answer is no because he hates Donald Trump. We'll give you that. But would you take the risk of going to jail for a longer time period, not seeing your kids go uh, go through their their school and college? I, I don't think so. I think Michael Cohen is essentially a defeated man. He's he's not going to sit there and cr and create a fab. He's not going to fabricate knowing that that could lead to more jail time. It's just not going to happen. <clears throat> I think you have a misinterpretation of what materiality means. Materiality means if it's material to the proceedings where Cohen was testifying to. So was this information about whether or not the Russian deal that Trump was allegedly trying to carry out ended in negotiations in January or June. Was that material to what Cohen was testifying to at Congress? And the answer is probably not. But one thing people really don't understand about perjury is you need something called corroboration. That means you need to have more than one person. Remember I talk all about time about how unjust it is to prosecute somebody based on one person's word. Well, perjury is the one exception in all criminal law where you need at least two people. It's called a two-person rule. However, I'm going to have to say though that for conspiracy to commit perjury, you don't need two. You don't need you don't need two people. But doesn't this then raise the 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 value? Assuming it's true, I mean, BuzzFeed says that Mueller had the documents, the texts, the emails before they even got the testimony from Cohen. In other words, so if Mueller has emails saying, "Oh, there's an email from Donald Trump to Cohen saying I want you to mislead Congress" or something to that effect. That makes the case. Yes, what you're saying is, is completely legally accurate, that in the event that it's factual, that the Mueller investigation not only has Cohen saying that he committed perjury and Trump solicited him or directed him to do it, but you have additional evidence, like another person's testimony or some documentary evidence. However, I'm highly skeptical. First of all, I'm highly skeptical of anything uh, Michael Cohen says, I understand that you trust and him, Donald Richard, but, we trust but, Donald Trump but, but I, don't, I don't trust anything <laughs> Michael Cohen says. He's not just a defeated man. He's a convicted man. He's a man that's trying to get his sentence reduced, and he has every motivation to lie. And I'm highly skeptical about what the additional evidence is. And, they and if they <clears throat> find that Michael lied, he'll be, go going, he'll, he'll be going to jail for a longer time period. They have emails. They have telephone records. They have passports. They also have a well, that's, revolving that's door. That's what BuzzFeed says. Buzz no, that's no, no. Let's not says, forget. But, let's, Let's not forget that Mueller has a revolving door of people in the inner sanctum who are cooperating with him. Paul Manafort, the chairman of the Republican National Committee, is cooperating with Mueller. And be between all those people, I don't think it's going to be that hard to find well, Richard, this, somebody this, to this, corroborate. This is, guess, I really don't. This, this is guesswork. It this is guesswork. It, it's, we don't know. It's, it's, it's guesswork. Remember, the square issue is did Donald, Donald Trump direct and solicit Michael Cohen to lie at Congress about the date that he ended his negotiations with Russia about about, and we're talking about Russia business people, about putting a Trump Tower in there. I mean, this is, it's not material to anything he discussed. And it's also, I mean, highly, highly questionable about what type of corroborating evidence that they may have. Well, I, I think, no, I think we're both, not, the bottom line, Trump's we're both not, guessing. Trump's, we don't know what the Trump's not getting don't charged don't with sure. perjury or, or, or rather conspiracy to commit perjury or soliciting perjury, which are three different charges, by the way, and suborning perjury. Now, I, I'm, I'm explaining that for suborning perjury, you have to have that corroboration. For conspiracy to commit perjury, you don't. But it's still an incredibly difficult yeah, task. Yeah, but what you're forgetting, what you're forgetting is that Mueller has the entire offices of Michael Cohen. He has tape-recorded conversations. He has emails. He has phone records. He has, that Mueller is, has just literally buildings of documents that he's pouring through to find out exactly what went on. And we don't know. We don't know. But what we do know is that Mueller has 
almost as much information as probably Donald Trump had. And and I would not be surprised if in that information there's something that corroborates Michael Cohen. Because at, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, this is not this is in front of Congress, which much serious. By the way, much more serious. But this is not the first one, one, misstatement one, of Donald one, Trump. One, one key point here: what if what if Donald Trump said, Donald Trump said something like, "When you go and talk to Congress, you know, you don't got to tell them everything." Like that's not that's hmm. not soliciting somebody to commit perjury. We don't know what if anything. We do know that Michael Cohen, before you go up in front of anyone, you make sure you, you're, you're briefed, you're questioned, you're cross-examined, and you are ripped apart. And we do know that, that Donald Trump and Michael Cohen had a very close relationship. You're right. We may never know if he suborned perjury, but I will tell you that it raises a lot of questions, and Congress is going to have a field day with What this. about the question in terms of Mueller's responsibilities? At what point does Robert Mueller, he could investigate for another 10 years if he wants to. At what point do you say, if you're the special counsel, okay, I have clear evidence of a possible impeachable crime. I have possible evidence over here that I may still investigate. At what point do you separate it and say, okay, Congress, this is what I have so far? Bang, I think bang. Ken and I agree. Ken, I think we agree on that. I think that Mueller doesn't have that yet. I think we agree on that. But I don't think Mueller's necessarily gone through everything. It's not necessarily, a, I, I do agree that there may not be enough to impeach Trump. It doesn't mean he didn't do anything wrong, but there may not be enough evidence. And I think the reason why it's going on so long, I think Ken and I agree on this, is because he doesn't have that yet. And he's trying to find it. He may find I, it. I, I definitely agree with you on that. I don't think that what BuzzFeed reported is anything new. You already have Michael Cohen saying that he directed me to make these campaign finance uh, payments, which, by the way, wasn't the crime in the first place, what Michael Cohen did. And we could discuss that for hours. And I Although don't. he did plead guilty to a no, crime. No, yes. But, I mean... he, he, he pled guilty to something because I, the I'm, arm, I'm the, pressure, the, pressure was, the pressure was put on him. The pressure was put on him. To your point, Donald Trump might say that that's not a crime or that's not, you know. Donald Trump had dual purposes, which surely he did, that he did not want his family to know about an alleged and affair or his And coincidentally, he paid it on the eve of the election? Come on, Ken. Ken, so what coffee you so drink? What? So what? So what have he said oh, on he the Trump University? Yeah, to, the, to the point about Come Mueller, on. you think that uh, Mueller, if he does have impeachable offenses, he needs to release it? I think that Mueller is so deep into this and oh. that he's brought cases that have real viability to them, mostly by, by non-American citizens, that he has to bring it right now if he's got something here. And I don't believe in the buzz Street report. I don't think this is any smoking gun. I don't think they have anything that could constitute any of the perjury charges I discussed or an obstruction of well, justice. Well, the bottom which line, is Ken, is that you and I don't know. And the other the question we have, by the way, is whether he will actually talk in front of Congress. Everyone's waiting for this big moment when he goes there. But if, but if, if in well, fact, he's been advised by the Mueller investigation not to disclose that, he may have to say, I've been told by Mueller, I well, can't get this, this in the first place. Maybe this is the indication that a Mueller report is coming before February 8th, because then at that point, oh, sure, Move. once the Mueller report drops, they're going to want to talk to Cohen and everybody else. Richard Absolutely. Roth, Ken Del Vecchio, Thank great you. conversation. Thank you. When we come back. Absolutely. Lebanon. Lebanon makes the case for Syria to